called stupid, biased, and a few other choice words not repeatable to a PG-13 audience. I even recently had my appearance attacked. One person said to me, I can tell just by looking at your hair that you're a flaming liberal who hates everyone. OK. <laughs> None of this was in person, of course, but in the online comment section on social media. We would never to say to anyone's face what we're willing to post in any online comment section. We let a computer screen strip away our humanity and perceive the other side as not just an opposing view, but as our enemy. We shut each other down every day, don't we? No matter what side we stand on, we look to the other side with contempt. Now, Oxford language defines contempt as the feeling that a person or thing is worthless, deserving scorn. Now, is that how we feel about an opposing view? We will never inspire solutions to social issues. We're either throwing contempt or we're absorbing it. My dad told me when I was a kid, he said, Bonnie, think before you speak. Well, I grew up to be a columnist, <laughs> a professional commentator. I've spent a lot of time thinking about my dad's advice. And I know it's my job to tie personal experience to current events and hopefully help people empathize, relate, and care. That's what I strive to do each week when I write. I'm going to amend my dad's advice for the digital age. I'm going to say, think before you comment. Because out there in the digital world, we are all commentators. And the one thing we consistently bring to the conversation is contempt. Your contempt won't change hearts and minds. But your personal experiences might. We just have to be brave enough to share them. It's rare to find productive discourse in any online comment section. And Dr. Brene Brown, she researches shame. And she says, shame is the tool of the oppressor. Guess what? Contempt prompts shame. Now, it shows up, contempt shows up in name calling. It shows up in judgment. And Dr. John Gottman, who is also very well known for his research on relationships, he can predict marital success with, with more than 90% accuracy. And what his research showed us is that people can come back from a lot of things. They can't come back from contempt. And if contempt is the ingredient that destroys a marriage, imagine what it does to our other relationships and to our communities. Dr. Brene Brown, she also calls contempt the dangerous emotion. Because if you and I disagree, that's OK. We're still connected. We're still listening. But with contempt, you've been dismissed, and you no longer matter. But contempt feels righteous. You read something, and it triggers that strong response, and oh, you got to let it out. Everybody brings their baggage to the page. That's normal. You read a news article, you need a social post, and you feel that emotion, that visceral emotion bubble up to the surface. But does everyone need to unload that baggage onto the public page? Last year for Mother's Day, I wrote about how my mom died in a car accident when I was young. And I was raised by my stepmom, and I love her very much. But that, that day is complicated for me. It's hard. Um, the first comment that I read in response to that very personal column said, thanks for starting Mother's Day off with such a dark, gloomy, self-absorbent rant. Ouch. <laughs> Our digital world is immediate. You fire off a comment, an email, a text message, without even taking a breath first, which is what I'm pretty sure that guy did in that response. It used to be you had to pick up the phone, knock on somebody's door, or write a letter. It went something like this. You read something in the newspaper, and it made you mad enough that you wanted to respond to it. Maybe you grumble about it to your spouse. Mention it at poker night or while you're out shopping with your sister. Did you read the news today? We'd ask. 
Then by the time you got a notebook and a pen, you sat down, hand wrote your response, find an envelope, get a stamp, your thoughts had a little bit more time to marinate and hopefully be more purposeful. Sometimes that trip to the post office wasn't worth it after all. So the letter never got mailed. I think maybe we should go back to that approach. <laughs> now, it's not healthy to hold all that emotion inside, so please don't bottle it. Shout all of those knee-jerk, contempt-filled words to your best friend. They get you. They'll understand. They probably even agree with you. Or, if you find yourself firing off that comment, maybe hit the copy and paste buttons instead. Put it to a different document and finish writing it. Let it sit. Then, dig deep. What purpose do you want your commentary to serve? Do you simply want to chastise the other side? Like the comments I mentioned earlier, do you just want to tell somebody they're wrong and then belittle them for how they think? It's time for us to take stock of our purpose and online communication. Let's be honest about what we really want from it. Because the thing is, you will never enact change or inspire anyone if you are speaking in contempt. You're just in an echo chamber going off. Or, you know, you're in the comment section belittling that person or thing that triggered you. Your words are landing on some random computer screen, but there is somebody on the other side. And oh man, it might feel good to let them have it. Especially if they're also commenting with contempt. But if we can challenge ourselves to get past the trigger, and really ask ourselves why something lights that fire in you, I bet you can pinpoint that personal experience that illuminates perfectly why you want to shout every expletive known to man. I'll give you an example. According to the US Department of Housing and Urban Development, almost 600,000 people experienced homelessness last year in the United States. That is a staggering number. And yet, in a recent New York Times article that was about homeless individuals sheltering on the subway, I read this comment. The subway is not a bedroom. To which I wanted to respond, you don't know what you're talking about, you heartless fool. It's mature, I know. You see, I was homeless for two years following high school. It's a lot easier for me to reach for that anger and contempt than it is to risk being vulnerable and share my personal experience. I read contemptuous comments like that all the time. And the one thing that I know for sure is that no matter what I share, I'm responsible for my own behavior. And that includes my responses to other people's behavior. Now, I get kind comments along the way, too. Don't get me wrong. But my favorite comments, my favorite comments are the ones that say, huh, I never thought about it that way before. Because it doesn't mean they have to agree with me. It just means that they were able to read someone's point of view without contempt and consider where somebody else was coming from. Inspiring others to listen and connect that's the skill that I want to spread in the world. So the next time you read something and you feel that bubbling up to the surface, shout all those expletives to your best friend or write them in a journal. And then dig deep to really identify why it lights such a fire in you. Find that personal experience that really connects the dots. Then if you still want to contribute to the public discourse, write that. Yeah. So instead of going off on that guy who was like, the subway is not a bedroom, I can respond in terms of my own experience and what I know to be true for myself. I was homeless in the suburbs, not New York City, so I've never slept on a subway. I have, however, slept in cars 
other people's unlocked cars. Sometimes they didn't have a choice and it gets cold. And there's no social services welcome wagon when you're facing a housing crisis. I know that my experience will connect the dots for compassionate others. Someone's life will be better for having heard my perspective through my experiences. Social media will have enough contempt without you, I promise. What it needs more of is purpose. The promise of empathy and meaningful connections. Your contempt won't change hearts and minds. But your personal stories might. Thank you.